John Sewell, Gimmer.com podcast. Uh, it is January 18th, 2024. And um, today I was hoping to present to you Arcade Belts. Uh, we had a really fun podcast lined up for uh, this week with Arcade Belts and the co-founder and the director of marketing and Devin Dowd. But I had a, something pop up yesterday with our, ho our house, so I had to reschedule. So um, it's actually a really good timing because an incredible amount of things have happened in the last 24 hours and uh, a lot for you to look forward to. A lot of content and a lot of meetings and some seminars from Strong First and Flexible Steel that we're hosting at our gym, Existence Athletics. So this is gonna be a fun one. I'm gonna try and cover the reviews, workshops, certifications, seminars, and uh, a lot, a lot of meetings coming up. So we'll start at the beginning. We'll just catch up on some reviews. Um, you know, just getting back in the swing of things after being sick for a few weeks, um, but we have a few reviews up. First up, Mystery Ranch. We work a lot with Mystery Ranch, and we often test things six months to a year, sometimes a year and a half before they come out, which was the case with this next three items I wanna talk about. We actually were testing them a year and a half before they came out, and they just got released last week. Uh, that is Mystery Ranch Radix 31 backpack. It's Mystery Ranch's kind of full ray into fast packing or ultralight backpacking. Um, so that's kind of a new category for them, taking the Mystery Ranch awesome integrity and build construction and applying it to ultralight materials um, for that segment of people who like to go fast and light. I like to go medium and medium. <laughs> I'm not fast, um, but I do like to hike. And the backpack worked really well for how I used it. I actually used it with my dog, Chloe, for a lot of day hikes. I used it on some electronic fat bike uh, jaunts and uh, carried very well. Uh, next up is the Mystery Ranch Galligator 25. I believe there's four or five sizes of this new style of backpack. And again, this is a new kind of category for Mystery Ranch. I believe it's named after a trail in Montana, Galligator. Um, but long story longer, it's kind of like a Ultra Runner's backpack it kind of has these longer panels right here and it carries weight really really well with no hip belt which is kind of unique for mystery ranch uh, so new category and our friend Erin who hooked us up she was our point of contact for many many years uh, she's a sweetheart she actually took hers to Europe and used it there as her everyday carry backpack with her family her kiddos and then the the one that probably be the biggest hit for our audience is the mystery ranch scree 33, it's kind of fun to say, Scree 33. Uh, this is the, the bomber everyday backpack for um, hikers, mountaineers, some climbers. Um, it's just extremely durable, streamlined, not a whole lot of extra pockets, just burly, ripstrop material, uh, and it carries a load very well, like Mr. Ranch always does, it just carries a load extremely well. Okay, um, up next we have um, Gordini. We do a lot of work with uh, gloves. We're meeting with Hestra here in a few weeks. Uh, we have reviewed a lot of Hestra stuff. Gordini is a more approachable brand for a lot of people, more cost effective. And I believe this is the gloves that our colleague and friend Raphael Peace helped design there. It's a very compact glove called a Frontline and it's got an Overmitt. Uh, Overmitt, if you don't know, is basically a, a really basic mitten that goes over your gloves. It's kind of like an emergency layer. It's not the kind of mittens you would put on as a first choice. It's kind of like after the fact. You're doing something, you got your gloves on or even mittens, and you need more warmth and you need some waterproof protection. You put on a, an over mitt, just in case you didn't know what that is. Heated vest from Ewol. Um, our friend Damien absolutely loves heated vests, and so he'll probably take this off my hands next week. Uh, it's pretty cool. Well, actually not cool it's pretty warm heated vest uh, you control on the chest and instead of having a light to know what level it is it actually has a haptic sensor so it kind of vibrates which is nice when you want to be incognito then my buddy brad kearns uh, brad kearns you probably know from uh, primal kitchen and primal blueprint uh, he's been on the podcast several times he has his own podcast the b-rad podcast my buddy um, dan vinson monkey man dan wild man dan has been on his podcast of course has been on our podcast in a sidebar to, to Monkey Man Dan. Um, we used to go winter camping together and split boarding and uh, shot some suspension trainer videos in the snow doing handstand push-ups and just, 
He's a badass. Um, he sent over a ruck pack that he designed recently, and um, it's really, really well made. Comes the version they sent us came with a 20 pound plate. You can easily add in other plates. We've used dumbbells in there. We strapped kettlebells in there. Um, it comes with a bag as well that you can fill with sand or water. It is a dry bag, so you can carry extra load that way, or you can take the ruck pack up to a certain place and then stuff it with wood or rocks in that extra bag so you can change your weight on the fly, so to speak. And um, since I've been dealing with the foot injury, I haven't been able to use it a lot myself personally, but I've given it to my colleague Ryan Humphreys and he did a, some strong first step up protocols that we got from Derek Toshner and Kenneth Boland. And then um, I was like, let's get this ruck pack out of the gym. Let's get it in the real world. So I gave it to the kettlebell couple, Abby and Garrett Sylvester and their dog Samson had been using it every day for two months this winter here in Denver, Colorado and in the mountains of Colorado. And um, they've been rucking the heck out of it every day. <laughs> and they're strong. They're probably the strongest couple I've ever met. Uh, strong first. That's how I met Garrett in 2015. And Abby works directly with Brett Jones and, and Pavel as their editor. Uh, so very strong people. And they've been pushing the heck out of that rucksack. I believe they're taking it on their honeymoon as well down to the Dominican Republic. So Dan, some cool content coming your way. Back to Brad Kearns. Brad is so rad, that hence the be rad. You know, he's just a fun guy. He's really intelligent, very passionate. Um, just a, a hoot to talk with. I should probably have him back on the podcast. He, um, he makes supplements sometimes, things he really believes in. He made up a whey protein isolate, grass-fed, of course. And he threw in three grams of creatine monohydrate. So there, there's two things that I would take supplement-wise. Well, there's probably five. I would, uh, multivitamin, fish oil, a protein of your choice, vegan or not, doesn't matter, um, and then creatine. Now, that, that's like a pretty safe daily stack right there. So he sent over a couple pounds of the, the B-Red grass-fed whey protein isolate. So I shot him a little video for that. Really tasty stuff, and I love it. It's really minimal flavor. It's just whey protein isolate, some um, South American cacao, I don't think there's anything else. Just that, nice and mild. Uh, True Work, here out of Colorado, True Work makes work wear. Uh, work wear is a category of clothing that people in many trades wear to work. Uh, think construction, think, you know, um, mechanics. Um, people doing hard, tough, manual labor. Work wear is that category for them. And this is the T3 Work Bib, which is an insulated, waterproof, windproof bib that um, I've used in temperatures down to negative five here in Colorado. And uh, it's been, it's with, withstood camping with my dog, uh, chopping wood and just doing the manual stuff here. So pretty fun stuff. All right, let's pivot to somebody else for a, a second. Drew Thayer, our resident goat. Um, goat as in greatest of all time? Yes, probably in a lot of levels, but he is just literally a mountain goat. He has, I feel like he's got three lungs. He just crushes it in the mountains. He, he does the running, he does the biking, he's got two kiddos at home. He's a great father, but when he's not at home, he goes and then he just goes when he goes. Um, just a great guy. And so I'm wearing this Patagonia Nano Air Light Hybrid to, uh, to kind of honor him because he has a review, a really fun review on the Patagonia Nano Air Light Hybrid that Patagonia sent him uh, about a year ago. Drew and I went to go meet with Patagonia. Uh, we had the video up with Corey Simpson of, of Patagonia going through gear that is just now coming out. So we met with them last spring to go over gear for 2024, this year. And then they sent us quite a bit of stuff to test out. And this particular jacket has been my favorite and Drew's favorite, so much so that I actually have two of these hoodies. Um, and so he goes up to Loveland Pass here in Colorado and shoots a really fun uh, video on him using it in about four degrees Fahrenheit after he climbs about a thousand feet up, maybe a little bit more. And um, he's got his icicle beard going. It's pretty, pretty entertaining. And so, uh, yeah, Patagonia Nano Air Light Hybrid. We're big fans. Sorry, got a little nose itch. Okay, on to what we're going to be working on for gear. So the big 
OMA event is coming up in one month and that is the Outdoor Market Alliance and we cover that every six months and it's fun because it's my favorite trade show. It's like outdoor retailer, but low key and more fun and more honest and just raw. So usually how it works is my colleagues, Will Rickards, his son, Kai Rickards, our friend, Michael Clemente, probably Steven Starks and myself and Ryan Humphreys go to the event and we team up in pairs of two or three with camera microphones and we go and interview all these companies. And it's fun because it's like we're kids in a candy store. It's literally like maybe 30 offices and each office has five or six different brands. So in one office, you might have Arcteryx, Hestra, Cool, um, Gordini, and Smith all in that office. And so we get to talk to the representatives from those companies about what's coming out. This is actually stuff for 2025. So we'll see how much we can share uh, what's under embargo and all that. But it's just a whole lot of fun. So in about a month, if you are a subscriber, um, you might get a lot of notifications and I apologize for that. Um, also, if you're a subscriber, thank you. Uh, we just absolutely love the people who subscribe to the channel and ask questions and interact all around the world. It's one, it's fun for me to interact with you guys. Two, we get to learn, not just myself, but our audience. Think about this. If you are involved on our channel, you have the ability to it's kind of like a platform. You can talk to other people. You can ask other people questions. I don't have all the answers. I just know how to use this stuff in the mountains with my dog and try and break it. But I don't know how people might use it in, in Europe or in South America or different environments or different applications. So, you know, we're all learning from each other here, basically. And if you're a subscriber, thank you for being part of the channel. We hit 13,000 subscribers last week, or was it yesterday? The days are running together. I, it was sometime in the last week. Uh, it, the growth is awesome. I love it. But I, more, more than anything, I prefer quality people over a quantity of people. I feel like our 13,000 people is like 300,000 in, 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 in terms of density and knowledge base. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, I should probably get a drink of water here. <laughs> Chatting. Okay, so meetings we have lined up. Uh, the very first one, Ortovox, great beacons. They're a big, big sponsor of our Beacon Bash, our sixth annual Beacon Bash. Ortovox makes great beacons and awesome clothing out of Europe. Michael Clemente has a few reviews and a few more in the process on some clothing from them. Um, our colleague, our teammate, Wade Lancaster, um, has their beacon probe shovel. He, he swears by it. Uh, Justin Ibarra, who is the instructor who has taught me for area levels one and two and companion rescue, uh, swears by Ortovox as well. So I'll have a meeting with them to go over what's new with them, as well as Duter. I hope I said that right. D-U-E-T-E-R. They make the backpacks out of Europe. And then we move on to Black Diamond. So all you climbers and dirt bags uh, out there will rejoice with what we get to cover for Black Diamond. Personally, as a split water, I like their compactor poles and their single wall tents are my favorite. They're easy to set up and they're great in the winter. And then we hop over and meet with Rachel Pop um, with Hestra, Hestra gloves, like I teased you with earlier, like about the best gloves you can get, right? Uh, so we'll have a meeting to go over them. And then this is, this is fun. Oh, how do I even put this into words? So OMA is a really big event and Engarement's a really big deal not just me like the whole team and where i'm going with this is these companies all reached out to to us ahead of time to try and get us into meet with them first and then they like adjust their calendars accordingly to other media and when i may say other media i'm talking like cnn uh, backpacker gear junkie um, all the huge publications that you probably check out as well and i hope you would um, just to get some context um yeah but in the pitch for OMA was the engagement team. It was Will Rickards, Kai Rickards, Michael Clemente, and Stephen Starks were in the, the picture saying, hey, register here, media, for OMA. And then Verde, which is a PR company that represents a, a lot of brands I'll mention here in a second, when they, like, they sent their pitch, hey, Sean, would you and the team like to meet up? Here's our, our window, you know, first come, you know, first serve. And uh, in their pitch, to not only us, but to the rest of the world for media 
was in Gearmit. Again, those same people, different angle, different picture. Um, yeah, that's that's incredible. <laughs> so we're we're I feel like we're pretty much a part of OMA, you know. And also, it's here in the Denver metro area, so it makes it more reasonable for us to to approach it with such a big team and a lot of resources. So Vert APR, uh, they're local here in Colorado. They represent outdoor research. Very, very fun brand. We had some outdoor research gear sent to us to test out um, our colleagues, Dan Jimenez and Ryan Humphreys. Uh, some other friends went down to Mexico to climb the third highest peak in North America. It's an 18,000 plus foot volcano. They just got back yesterday and they went down and tested a bunch of outdoor research stuff. So we'll have some content coming up on them. And as I've said on many podcasts and in many reviews for outdoor research, I feel like they make the best quality for the best value. Um, meaning that it's like no frills, like not a whole lot of advertising. It's not bougie, like Patagonia. Um, it's just functional gear and clothing that works at a very, very fair price. Um, and if you have a pro deal, if you are a, a military vet, a first responder or um, other trades, you probably have access to pro deals, I would recommend jumping on outdoor research. It's the best value out there. Not paid to say that, that's just my honest opinion. Cascade Design, this is the parent company um, for Thermarest, MSR, Mountain Safety Research, um, Platypus, hydration and filtration devices. Um, so. We love working with Thermarest. Oh, and they, Thermarest sent a, a, a sleeping bag and a sleeping pad for Dan to use on the volcano. Yeah. Um, I always carry a Thermarest zero degree sleeping bag in my truck year round, just as a backup. Um, they, and they're, most of their stuff is made in North America, made in, in Washington state specifically. And if it's not, it's probably made in Ireland. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's not, you know, some people are really sticklers on where things are made. You can feel, if you live in America at least, you can feel really good about Thermarest. Or if you live in Ireland, I suppose there's some Irish people listen to the podcast too. Um, good chance it's made in your home country. Scarpa, uh, the great mountaineering equipment. Um, I like their running shoes personally. We actually had a couple of the riders use Scarpa boots um, and La Sportiva boots on the volcano last week. Uh, then Rosinol, um, high end ski, skis, you know. So we'll meet with them. Gregory Backpacks. Uh, Gregory, I, they make one of my favorite hiking backpacks this year. Um, I used the heck out of that thing. And then Mammut. Mammut uh, is, in my opinion, the best beacons. Uh, my, my personal choice, um, I have the Berry Vox and the Berry Vox S. Um, and I don't think I can say what's coming out from them yet, but I've had my hands on it, and it is incredible. I'll leave it at that. And then PAKA, P-A-K-A. -A. Um, I think I'm wearing a PAKA shirt right now. It's alpaca uh, wool, so not merino wool, alpaca wool from an alpaca. And they make really cool minimalist clothing. And we just got pitched today from them to test out their base layers. So uh, my entire base layer system this year for split boarding will be alpaca wool. So we're gonna meet with them. And then uh, DPS. Uh, Drake Powder Sports, I believe, uh, out of Utah, DPS. If you ski, you know, this, this is high-end skis. Uh, them and Phantom, uh, they developed the Phantom treatment, which I do on all my split boards. It's a permanent wax, basically. It goes into the base of the ski or snowboard or split board. Um, yeah, I have two split boards back there, one behind the other one, and both are treated um, by the Phantom treatment. In fact, we met with Phantom and treated that board up against the wall together. It made a little video on how to do it. It's, uh, I recommend it to anybody. It's about a hundred bucks. It lasts forever. It's eco-friendly. Doesn't wear off into snow. doesn't go into the watershed. Uh, it just is a permanent friction control mechanism that's beyond my pay grade to explain. It just, it keeps you going. It keeps you moving forward. <laughs> Keeps you sliding down the mountain in a good way. And then Thule. Oh, Thule. You know Thule. They make the, the cool uh, rooftop carriers for skis and snowboards and gear. Well, uh, they also make rooftop tents. They make luggage. They make briefcases. They make all kinds of stuff. They actually sent over their biggest four-person rooftop tent. It's on my truck and has been for the last seven months. Um, we'll be going to use it in the snow tomorrow night. Uh, so we'll have a fun meeting with them. Look forward to that. 
it was fun too. The, about a year ago, we met with Thule and we went out to the parking lot of OMA and we saw this rooftop tent and I, we, I was so blown away. And I was just kind of went home that night and I told my wife about it. I was like, can you imagine having like a really spacious rooftop tent for the family? You know, you, at the moment, my wife and, and dog and I. Um, and so I kind of fantasized about it for a few days. Lo and behold, a few months later, it shows up at our doorstep and is now on the truck and has been used a lot by my family. Good stuff. Then Norona. Norona is like hmm, the Arcteryx of Europe. The really high, of Scandinavia more specifically. Really high end, really well made, very expensive um, gear. But uh, they love working with us and we love working with them through meeting with Norona and also Primus. Primus is a really cool company. Primus makes stoves, uh, packable stoves, camp stoves. Just if it has to do with heating stuff up, they do it and they do it really, really well. Meeting with them. Then Nemo. Oh, Nemo, not the fish, the tent company. Been big fans of Nemo for many, many years, probably 15 plus years. I remember one of the very first videos I shot for Engearment, my buddy Dave and I, the co-founder at the time, uh, went out and shot a video for the Nemo tent. We didn't have it sent to us. We didn't get a pro deal. I went out and purchased it because I really, really wanted to, to see it. I, saw, I think I saw Jeremy Jones using an Nemo tent in a, in a snowboard movie and I was like, I want to try it out. So he shot a video, sends it to him. We're like, cool, cool. Um, thanks for putting that together. And that was about it. Now we are 15 years later and meeting with them. It's pretty awesome. Uh, Nick Wax. Nick Wax makes cleaning and waterproofing treatments that are eco-friendly. We've had them on the podcast. Um, I think we've had them on a podcast. If not, we, we will. Uh, I believe they're out of the UK. But basically, if you wash your gear, your clothing, you should be washing your stuff. This is what you should be using. Or, or Granger's is good too. But I like Nick Wax personally. Um, the Tech Wash to wash the gear and prepare it. And then the DWR treatment to add the water repellency back to it. It's a winning solution. It's cost effective. I do it every couple months, run a nice couple loads with Nick Wax. Keeps my stuff going good. And there's no wax in it. <laughs> it is a liquid. You put it in the washing machine, keeps things breathing. And if it's waterproof like Gore-Tex, this is what you should be using to clean it and then re-waterproof it. All right, moving right along. So I was excited about the alpaca wool. There's other wools out there. Merino, obviously, is probably what you're thinking of, the sheep. But there's also yak wool. That's right, yak wool. Cora is the company, K-O-R-A. My buddy Matt over at Echoes is who we're meeting with. Cora makes yak wool, base layers and clothing. Now, what's cool about yak, so let's think about elevation and animals and make some assumptions here. Sheep in the foothills, uh, low mountains to some of you keeping warm, right? And then you got yaks that are higher in elevation. You know, think about like Tibet, right? They're way up there. They need to stay warmer. So their, their wool is a little bit burlier and warmer than Merino. And alpaca is somewhere around there. I don't know what the elevation of alpaca is where they live at, but it's somewhere around, it's higher than sheep, but it's up there. So that's why alpaca is so good too. But yeah, yak wool, I've got many, many things from Cora. And not only is it warm, warmer than merino and i love merino i'm not talking ill on merino i merino is my daily driver but yak wool is just a little bit burlier and warmer per weight um and then we meet with my friend ali over at eagle creek eagle creek makes travel bags and luggage and travel systems and and cool stuff a lot of cool stuff and that's just the meetings i have there's seven of us going so I, th I think last count, there's 88 brands we're going to meet with. So there'll be a lot of content. So I'm not even going to tell you what Devin Dowd's schedule is, or Clay's schedule, or Will and Kai and Michael and Ryan. But we got a lot of coverage coming up from OMA. So stay tuned for that. And now let's talk about some opportunities to learn at our gym, Existence Athletics, here in Denver, Colorado. You know I've mentioned it in a lot of reviews. In prior podcast, our gym existence has been on for 10 years. It's in Denver, Colorado, 1950 South Quebec Street, to be specific. It is one block over from the Denver Dumb Friends Leagues, which is the, the dog rescue. And um, one block over from a coffee roaster. So you can come over, get a cup of coffee, train with us, and go rescue a dog. Pretty awesome stuff. 
but we love education. We take it very, very seriously. Continuing education in health and fitness. As you can see the kettlebells behind me, I use kettlebells every day with people I work with, as well as myself. So I'm really excited to announce that we're having some workshops here in March at our gym, hosted by Annalisa Naldi, who's freaking awesome, and Maggie Burrows, who's just awesome and strong as heck. I've had a chance to learn from both of them and work alongside Annalisa several times for Strong First events. And she is top-notch and Maggie is a phenomenal, phenomenal instructor. Can't recommend them enough. So we will have Strong First Workshops Kettlebell 201, working on swings, get-ups, and, and uh, I believe squats. Barbell 301, so prep for the barbell certification, created by my buddy, friend, and mentor, Doc Hartle. And then the body weight 301 to prepare for the body weight certification, which we will be having in May at our gym with the creator of that, Karen Smith. So that is gonna be absolutely incredible. And then uh, in the summer, we are hosting my good friend, Matthew Flaherty, who might've been on the podcast more than anybody else. Maybe Pat Flynn's been on more, but Matthew Flaherty and a fantastic, instructor with strong first and flexible steel flexible steel is um, something i use every day on myself and all the people i work with in fact i have a video or two on our engagement youtube channel if i think about it i'll put that in the show notes showing you some intro stuff from flexible steel that requires no equipment and i shot it in the snow in the mountains five degrees so you can truly do this anywhere of any level so we're going to be hosting a flexible steel seminar certification at our gym on that is me july 13th and on july 14th the sunday we're going to be hosting the flexible steel indian clubs certification indian clubs are basically uh like a small um bowling pin they've been around for quite a long time a fantastic mobility tool uh great for joint integrity so we'll be going through a certification on that taught by matthew flaherty so come check that out if you like and then we're really excited about this. Brett Jones will be hosting the SFG2 at our gym in September, September 28th. And uh, SFG2 is just like the next level of kettlebell certification from Strong First. A lot of really cool, incredible, strong movements in there. And then the day before, I'm very excited about this, he'll be hosting an Iron Cardio workshop. So I'll be attending that for sure. Iron Cardio is his book he released this year. Uh, basically, it's a streamlined, efficient, effective training program. And Brett's gonna go through and explain it in more detail and practice with more hands-on techniques. So anytime you can get to learn from Brett Jones is truly an honor. Um, I personally have learned from Brett. I've uh, been learning from Brett in person and online and in videos and in books for a decade now. I got to actually learn from him firsthand for the first time at the SFG1 in 2017 here in Denver. And that was an absolute pleasure. And then since then, I've, I've very fortunate to build up a friendship with him and work alongside him at several Strong First events and seminars and the Teachers of Strength. He literally is the teacher of the Teachers of Strength. He's the director of education for Strong First. I mean, it, he's the best. He's Brett Jones. He's gonna be at our gym. So if you wanna learn from Brett, get your butt over to Denver in September. Um, I think that does it for the seminars we're having it in person here in Denver that you can attend. I'll put links below for those. The workshops are a couple hundred dollars. The certification, that's more of an investment. That is a, you know, a continuing education certification for health and fitness professionals. Um, but you probably know that going into this. Hopefully this half an hour flew by. Hopefully um, it gave you some things to think about, some things to look forward to, whether it's the gear and the companies we're getting to work with, that hopefully we get to show you how the gear works or the clothing fits and how we use it and where we use it. Um, I apparently we use stuff on volcanoes now. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But, uh, and also for health and wellness and fitness, there's a lot of opportunities here to learn from the people I, that I feel are the best in the world at this. And I've learned from personally, I've learned from Annalisa at SFGs. I've, uh, I can't vouch enough for them. And that's why we're having them at our gym to work potentially with you if you want to come check it out. And uh, more than likely, I will probably be in the class with you. And if not, I will be hosting the, you know, 
background stuff and making sure everybody has what they need to succeed and to learn.